Hey guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs, and thank you for watching this video. Now, today I'm going to show you how to make another YouTube background. Uh, I've made a couple of these videos before, maybe this one will be more professional. Uh, it will be quite longer, so just kind of stick with it, and hopefully, you'll have a more professional like background. So, to start off, uh, well, I have this template here, which is the modules which kind of will appear on your channel. Uh, you can, uh, there might be a link in the description, if not, look at my other videos or search YouTube. Uh, you should be able to find a uh, background somewhere out there. But without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I'm just going to work on the background. So I'm just going to double click on the spare gap and go to Gradient Overlay. I'm going to change the style to Radial. I'm going to reverse it and I'm going to alternate the white with the kind of colour scheme that I'm going with, which is a uh, kind of like a greenish sort of colour scheme, maybe a bit lighter maybe more of a green lime sort of colour like so and I'm just going to maybe oh I did not mean to do that like just delete that other one and that would be a black, okay so go on the black I'm just going to go up to the green uh, just so it's kind of like a really dark green on the outside like so, so that's looking quite nice and it's going to click OK. And actually, this is kind of better than just having a solid color. And now, uh, one other thing I like to do is I like to make a new layer. And if you go to Filter, Render, and Clouds, it kind of bring out some clouds. And this kind of diffuses it. And so it's just, instead of it being kind of like plain and all smooth, it's going to go actual picture. That's what it looked like. It would kind of add a bit of texture and depth to it. Well, obviously not now. But yeah, to go to the channel type, change it to overlay, and change the opacity, crank it down to about 50 or so, maybe a little bit lower depending on your preference. But that's starting just to look a little bit better. It, as I said, it adds a bit more depth to it. And that is it for now. Now, one other thing I like to do, I like to go on Google. Google is always your friend. And I've typed in green abstract. Uh, and go to large and that's going to use one of these images I haven't actually decided what I'm going to use, I might use this one here uh, just an abstract one, it won't really matter what picture, just want to create a bit of diffusion in the background uh, doesn't really matter, that's looking that's all right. That's quite nice, you want something with a bit of kind of bit of feel to it I'll go stick with my guns, go this one uh, you know usually if, when you make tutorials you kind of usually go through it beforehand no, I haven't in this one so bear with me if I do make a few steps wrong Maybe go back on what I just did. See that picture, maybe a bit pixelated, but anyway, doesn't really matter. You're not going to be really seeing it. I just line it up there so it's kind of drag it into the corner, and the same down into this corner. Now I am going to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to add a blur to it. Just so it kind of take out all the sharp edges. Uh, something like this. So this about 18. Kind of depends on your image, really. I'm just going to click OK. Uh, maybe I may have to go back on that. I'm going to change this to overlay as well. And maybe crank it down to about 70. Like so. Now, that again, just kind of gives it a bit of a feel. A bit of brighter and dark. Kind of contrast, if you will. And I think that's looking quite nice coming along. If you go to actual pixels like so. Uh, that's looking quite nice for the background. So now I'm going to get started on the modules. Now this is kind of a personal preference. Again, depends on what kind of colours you're going for. But, uh, one, one, modules. Uh, you need to work on one of the modules. Uh, I'm just going to go to the bottom left box, which is this one here. I usually like to just take colour overlay and go back again, just so you can kind of realise what one you're working on. Just so I have a habit of doing. And I'm going to go to color overlay. And instead of having it pure black, I like well, a few shades lighter than black. So like a darkish grey. And just hit OK. And I like to go to stroke. Maybe change the color to a white. For now, change it to the inside and the size to 1. And then you kind of see that you've got kind of a smallish stroke. Uh, but it kind of defines the box a bit more. Go to outer glow, change it to normal, and the color to black. 
if you don't change the blend mode to normal, the black will not be noticed. So if you go to screen, you know, black doesn't seem to work with it. So just change it to normal. And that's looking quite nice. In fact, one other thing that I may like to do, change a fill type to gradient and change the style to shape burst. And you can just change these colours to me like a green, sort of whitish kind of colour. Like so. And it's kind of like overlays a bit more. Again, it's another personal preference depending on like what you want to do. But that is looking good for the bottom left hand box. So now I'm going to right click, copy layer style, and I'm going to add it to all the other all the other different modules. Now another thing in Photoshop, it brings up a little FX, little drop down bars, which do get on your nerves because you really don't really want to see them. It just kind of clogs it up. Um, no, that's looking quite nice. Just go fit on screen. The background's coming along to the plain white and black. So another thing that I do like to do is use optical flares, and this is commonly used like down the sides of the page, and that's kind of what I'm going to be doing here. Um, to get optical flares, really, what I do is After Effects. So you just go to if you, if you need optical flares from Video Copilot, you need to purchase that, and that's a good investment. Go to Options, uh, and go to Show Presets. Uh, motion graphics, and you can just choose anyone. I usually like. I'm not going to bother pronouncing that. It's too much effort. I've just been to school. Yeah, and you know, just click OK, and that is pretty much it. You know, maybe just kind of center it up a bit more. But you know, then just kind of go full screen and print screen that. I'm not going to bother doing that because I've already got one on the desktop. So I'm going to go to File Open, and I'm going to open that optical flare here. I'm just going to go to the Marquee tool drag out, edit and copy and I'm just going to paste that in here obviously make a new layer, in fact I'm not going to go in the modules tab I'm going to make a new layer above the modules and go to edit and paste like so and I'm just going to get in a rubber make sure the rubber is quite big and make sure when you've got the erasure you, the hardness is on zero, you want to leave some nice soft edges in fact beforehand we're going to change the layer to screen just kind of get rid of the most of the back background. So you just go around the outside, you know, just uh, eliminate the hard edges, like so, and it just gives it a more smooth feel. Now I'm going to go to Edit Free Transform, and I'm just going to align it with the kind of left hand side of the module modules. Like so if I'm going to flip the image, yeah, I'm going to flip the image. That's my new way of flipping it. I'm gonna make it maybe just a bit longer. That's what she said. Yeah, but I'm gonna put that below the modules. And not in the module. In fact, I'll put it in the modules, doesn't really matter. And I make sure but make sure it's kind of below all the boxes. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of align it like so. Now that's looking good, except the one problem is that it's blue as opposed to green, which is the colour scheme that we're going for. Just gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna go to hue and saturation. And I'm gonna hold right click on the hue and saturation and go to create clipping mask, which will kind of overlay onto this fact, what's layer for? In fact that's that's not a good layer. Create clipping mask, make sure it's on the flare. And I'm just going to change it to kind of like a green, this short colour. Like, so that's kind of what we're going for. And that's looking quite nice. Again, you can move it. I'm going to use the arrow keys here. And so I'm just going to right click on them and go to merge layers. So you kind of got one. Oh, crap, that didn't work out. No, you're not going to merge them. But on the optical flare layer, I'm going to hit Control J, which is going to duplicate them. Go to the bottom one. And I'm just going to move the bottom one over to the left hand side. I'm maybe going to go, maybe make it a bit bigger. You can always use a different flare of different sides just to mix it up. But I'm doing this for time purposes. Drag it up a tad. Like so. Click OK. Now Control J the hue and saturation which duplicates it again. And drag it under the layer 3 copy and create clipping mask. So you're basically just duplicating what you did before, doing the same steps. You've got through and saturation, clipping mask onto the um yeah oh, I've got a bad throat now. Onto the optical flares and the same again, through and saturation, optical flares. 
and that is coming along and that's kind of the base of your actual YouTube background right there so that's actually what it will be seen like uh, now we're going to the text, text is often a hard thing to kind of get some actual nice looking text <coughs> no I do apologise I'm going to try my best, change the colour to grey for now and obviously because I'm called Chrome Designs I am going to write Chrome Des Ains. And the font I'm using is Bank Gothic and it's quite a commonly used font you know even in the major businesses I've seen it used quite a few times uh, Modern War, uh, Call of Duty use it uh, Lynx use it uh, obviously not for everything but you know they, they do kind of work with this font and line it up what I do like to um, what I like to do is that is how the web page will be seen as you see um, the top there that is where the top of the page will be so that's, that's that's what the viewer will actually see on your page depending on their resolution so I like to kind of like align it to the middle of what they first see maybe a bit lower down but just so you can see it on as soon as they go onto your page so they're not scrolling down in some big huge letters again it's another personal preference but I'm going to right click and go to blending options I'm going to add a car gradient overlay I'm going to change the angle to zero so it's going vertical as opposed to horizontal and uh, I'm going to change this very top one to a white this bottom one to a darkish grey and we're going to add something about location 33 and I'm going to make that mm, a bit darker like a lighter grey, maybe drag it down just a bit maybe not so much uh, I really got to kind of mess around with the colours just to make it look good I kind of like the white tip text I think I saw on Apple, I think I quite liked it uh, it's not really working out here though but anyway you get the general gist of what I'm trying to get at you've got some kind of grey diffuse text like so and click OK. You don't really want to mess about with the drop shadow and everything now because we're going to be making some 3D text. I'm going to click Control J, go to the bottom layer, go to Edit, Free Transform. In fact, no, on the duplicated layer, go to one at the bottom, go to Color Overlay, and just leave it on red. I like to leave it on red just so you kind of really see what it with um, what you're working with. Go to one of the corners, hold Shift and Alt, and drag inwards. In fact, I'm going to use the top left corner, drag inwards. It's not working. Uh, shift and Alt. Let's drag in. Uh, that'll do. Again, if you have Cinema 4D or whatever, you can use 3D text there. You don't even have to have 3D text, if I'm honest. But it does help. Now, let's go back to color overlay. And just kind of choose a darker grey, just so you can kind of really get the depth in there. A bit darker than that. I kind of like to stick away from using black text. Uh, again, it's another personal preference. A lot of personal preferences in this video. I'm just going to add a drop shadow. And maybe add a bevel and emboss. Yeah, remove the black, you know, the white. Just be there. Maybe add a stroke. Change the size to two. Maybe just a kind of a dark grey. I do kind of like to stay away from the black. I'm anti-black. Not in the literal terms. Okay, so we've got the text on the left, and your background is kind of pretty much really getting there. It's looking quite nice. Uh, you've got some kind of flares going in the background. It's not the same consistent colour. It's looking nice. You was a fade. The modules need to be below the fade. Like so, it actually does fade. So obviously it goes in order on the right and so uh, on the layers panel, it does go in order. So what you want to be on top will have to be on the top and also at the bottom. We're at the bottom. So the background is obviously last. Otherwise it will overlay on everything else. I'm going to right click, go to fit on screen, and there is our background. Uh, there it is in all its glory. Uh, you can obviously add some other things. Do use just some uh, techniques for your own background. Uh, but no, that's really about it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you learned something. Hope you can maybe get a more professional-looking background than what you previously had. Uh, but no, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.